Hi, everyone. This is Elizabeth Wagner, also known as Ralphira Leodon from the Midnight D&D podcast. Join us this Friday at midnight and every Friday to uncover Ralphira's dark secrets that I'm sure you are all waiting to know. Thank you once again and join us on 91.5 WJHS and hear brand new episodes of Midnight D&D. Check us out online at WJHS91.5.org. Now, enjoy this week's Midnight D&D. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Midnight D&D Episode 5. I do apologize, but we were having some technical difficulties, so I've had to remake Episode 5's introduction. What you missed from the audio that was accidentally spliced out during the editing process was that Ralphira missed with her mace attacking the witch... Finn managed to land a very solid hit onto the witch, dealing a massive blow to her health, and Corolo did absolutely nothing because his spell managed to fizzle out before it hit the witch. Thank you for listening to WJHS's Midnight D&D podcast, and I really am happy about the support and everything that we've been getting from people, the feedback and whatnot. So I would like to thank you once again, and I hope you listen next Friday at midnight to episode six of Midnight D&D. And I do believe it is Krollo's turn. Krollo, please go. How far away am I? Uh, I would say you're about like, 15 feet away from her. I'm going to run up in shocking grasp. Alrighty. Please roll. Six. I get plus three when I'm in combat, so nine. Uh, six damage. Doesn't hit, unfortunately. As soon as you run up to grab her, you notice that your spell slowly begins to die in strength as you get closer and closer to grabbing her actual physical body. But you do notice that it does start to make her more of a physical form and a more physical shape than a smoky apparition. Already, it is now Raphira's turn. Raphira? I would like to try to do the same thing I did last time, but try to make it effective. Already. So... It would have been 14 plus, plus, one. plus one. Yeah. Ghosted. Unfortunately, Oops. you do get what Curl said, ghosted. She smokes away again and forms back around. Her hand is now grabbing a hold of your mace as she slowly lifts you off the ground slightly. Hank, it is your turn. I'd like to bonk her on the head with my quarterstaff. 
You get a <laughs> All right. Bonk Roll. on the head. <laughs> Very hard. 16. 16. It hits. You notice that Don't from... Don't you lie to me. <laughs> you notice that from Crollo's magic spell hitting her, you have successfully hit her in not the spot you intended, but you hit her in the physical piece that has now manifested because of Colton's fire hands. Please roll damage. Okay. I got a two. A two? Two. Yes, girl. Hank, I have an idea of what you're going to have to work with me on this. Okay. Then it's your turn. I'm going to do it again. Oh, because the only thing you can do <laughs> is do it again. Basically. 14. Plus my melee? Yeah. 18. You successfully hit. I did it! Yay! I need you to roll two d8s. 14. 14. Can I roll for crit? What'd you roll? I rolled a 14 for armor class. I don't know if that's so... You only crit if you get a 20. Well, unless your weapon has an augmented crit of a 19. You rolled an 18. That's... Okay. I thought I had to roll. I didn't know it was no. first. Um, so, you guys, mostly Ralph Ira sees close up that Finn has now slammed his double-bladed sword into the side of the witch which has now begun spewing out a black goo from her side that Finn has struck her on from his sword. <laughs> you notice that she tries the ghost away, but in that one specific place, it's not really wanting to do that. It is now the witch's turn. All of you need to make constitution saving throws. Five, sixteen. If you did not it's a crit fail. If you did not succeed in the DC saving throw of a 14 or higher on your constitution saving throw, you are now hearing a very loud ringing within your ears, and you feel as if your brain is now boiling. You guys take minus two to all of your rolls for the next couple of turns. I was pretty close. I had a 15. I said a 14. Can I still get it? Yeah, you, still, you got it. You successfully saved yourself. She is now using psionic magic. Crollo, it is now your turn. Hank, work with me here. I'm going to jump on Hank's back and use dancing lights while going like this over his hands. All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, you still got to roll the concentration for the magic. Eight. The spell fizzles out. Well, I tried, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Some people struggle in times like this. I'm referring to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> what? Can't hear you. Too short. <laughs> Rough iron is your turn. You gotta jump on. <laughs> is there any specific place you're trying to grab onto her from? I wanna smash her head into the wall. Get a smash her head into the wall. That is a grapple. Roll a grapple. Minus two. Oh. Ten. Ten. Yeah, you don't do anything. <laughs> you just end up putting your hand through her head as she ghosts away. And then reforms around your arm, trapping your arm within her head. Hank, it's your turn. All right. Crollo, you worked with me. Now it's time I worked with you. I'm going to take him by his legs and hit her as hard as I can with him. <laughs> no, no, please, no. Uh, I think you're going to live because I just rolled a 13. Back with my mace. With your mace already? I am missing my d6. One. What'd you what do you roll? A D six, that's what my base is. Yeah, but you're supposed to roll a D twenty to see if you even hit. <laughs> Three. <laughs> yeah, you don't hit. As you see Ralphira also run up with Finn, she begins to come at like an angle, swinging up from below with her mace trying to knock her in her head. Ralphira, you notice that as you get closer that her body begins to disappear once again into that smoke-like substance and then reform back into a solid body. She cackles in your face and goes, you'll never be able to hit me with something trivial like that. And with that, Hank, it is your turn. All right, awesome. Good, you stunning fist. <laughs> stunning fist. All righty, real quick, Hank. Yes, girl, no. The only thing trivial is how you made it so long with your bad spells. That was the worst I insult know. you've had this <laughs> entire session. She gains health. <laughs> she gains... Uh, no, Hank, you said stunning fist. Yes. Roll. Oh, no. Once again, you see the same thing happen that happened to Finn and Ralph Iron when they tried to attack her with a physical attack. You notice that your hand just goes right through her and your fist becomes lodged within her solidified body now. 
Finn, this is now your turn. I'm going to try that again. You're going to try to hit her again? Ex- except this time I'm going to go try slicing off her head. You're going to try taking a chop at her head, I see. All right, please roll your damage. 11. No. Dang it. Once again, you try to take a swing at her head and smoke. Is this all you do? When you become strong like me, there's a lot of things you can do. Imm- Immortality is just one of the very few things. Yes, Krilla. I wouldn't call it strong. You got hit by my burning hand. Alrighty, Erasio, it is now your turn. You said his fist is inside her right now? Yes, it's like lodged within her body. I'd like to take him out. <laughs> oh, alrighty. Yeet. Alright, roll a strength. Nine. You successfully help him out of her chest hole. Uh, as you rip him out, you notice that her body doesn't give away like it usually does when she's hit with a physical attack. Hank, you even manage to pull a scrapping of her clothes off. It's a ripped piece of like a sash. It smells like sulfur. Oh god. It smells like sulfur. And that is your turn, Erasio. The witch is now attacking Erasio again. Erasio, you now notice that you are now becoming enveloped in a black veil that is circling around your body as you, in an instant, disappear from sight of everybody else around you. Where did you put him? In a very dark place where no one will ever find him again. He'll never see the light of day. Avenge me! We will get him back. You can try all you want. You'll never see your friend again. Hank successfully decides to use Krollo as his weapon of choice this attack. Uh, yes, Krollo. I'm not saying I'm a bad weapon. I think if I tried to be a weapon, I'd be the best weapon, but we're, we're rolling with it. Also, ah! <laughs> In this case, you are the best weapon because you're magic, and magic beats magic. My body is physical, though. <laughs> I hope it's ready. <laughs> Roll an arm, arm strike. I'll use your own arm strike. Oh, uh, my damage for that? Yeah. Okay. If you want, you can also get plus Curlo's broken bones <laughs> damage. No, no, but you do. You could use Fury of Blows. Uh, I'm just gonna roll my normal. Okay, it's a six. A six? Yes. Alrighty. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you used them as a sword. <laughs> no, more like a bat. A bat. All right, finish your turn. I'm not even going to describe it? Nope. Please. Uh, all right, oh. fine. You see from where you're sitting on top of Hank that he grabs a hold of your ankles and puts you out in front of him and starts spinning around like a Beyblade top, flaming your body, mainly your chest arm area, into the witch, which causes her to topple a little bit and move from her position, freeing Ralphira from her head prison where her arm is. We make a great team, Krolo. <laughs> Krolo, you take two damage. Actually, on three damage. I'm at twelve. Finn, it's not your turn. You just saw <gasps> Hank and Krolo do their combo attack. Ow. <laughs> we did it. Ow. Is, oh. is my sword still stuck inside of her, or is it out? It's like in her side, <laughs> stuck a bit. You're oh. good if you want to. Can I, pull out. Can, can I try just swinging her across and hitting her against the wall with my sword? You're gonna try to slam her into the wall with your sword? Alright. Yes. I'm still there. <laughs> Already. I'm still stuck on Roll. what I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> you only five, Crollo. Alright, uh, well. 19. Alright, and with this uh, the awesome combo attack of Crollo and Hank comes to an end as Finn takes the spotlight and begins to spin the witch around, who is stuck on his blade and slams her into the wall. Please roll damage. Five. I got a 19 for the crit. You did get an augmented crit. Please roll, or it's times two that damage if you want to roll another two of those that I try to get higher or times two it. I have eight damage total. You do 14 damage. Let's go! Is she still alive? Yeah, she's still alive. As alive as someone who's a mortal can be? Yeah, but from that last onslaught from Finn, her whole entire body has now become a physical manifestation. He beat her around so bad and slammed (laughs) her into that wall that her her entire body has now stopped becoming a smoky apparition and is now a solid form. As real as you or Hank or uh, or Krollo. Yes, Finn? Still not worried about us mortals, huh? She is too uh, 
knocked around, dislodged is the right word, I think, from reality of what is happening to her to really even be able to say anything. Do I take any damage from being, like, flung off of her? Because I was... No, you're good. All right. Because I'm feeling pretty mortal right about now. (laughs) The only thing mortal is how mortally awesome that was. No. No. That was pretty no. That was awesome. It was cool. No, you're joking. Only I get the Uh, one-liners. It is the witch's turn, but with the end of her turn, you do now notice that she had began to try to conjure up a spell of her own, and it has blown her through the wall to the outside of the lighthouse. She has successfully killed herself. (laughs) Wow. Okay. The spell she had tried to cast was Power Word Kill, which would have killed any one of you in a single attack. Did we do it? I don't know if she's dead or not. She's down there, though. I'd like to climb down the lighthouse. Already? Go ahead. Can I pat Finn on the back a little too hard? Yeah, go ahead. (laughs) Would that be a... That's a climb. That's a climb? Okay. You're climbing down the lighthouse. You had to climb. Okay, soft 21. It would just be a 21. It wouldn't be a soft anything, but I like the way you play. Yeah, you guys see that Ralphira is now climbing down. Ralphira, you climb down the side of the lighthouse, down the two stories that you guys have been climbed up. As you get to the bottom, you do see that she is lying on the ground. Her bones and body are in a very peculiar pattern or way she is laying now on the ground. You do not see that she is breathing, and you do not see that she is alive in any sort of way. What's it looking like down there? Can I step on her face? Yeah, (laughs) go ahead. Do I have to roll for it? Go ahead. She seems pretty dead, as dead as a doornail. Where's my one-liner? You get one. (laughs) How's that for a mortal? Very well. I like that. You guys have successfully, well, I guess she kind of beat herself, (laughs) successfully killed the witch. Congratulations, guys. We did it, guys. So, gal. Where's Erasio? Yeah, where is Erasio? Is he coming back? You don't notice anything out of the ordinary happening. Erasio isn't coming back. I'll ask Maximus what happened and where he's at. Maximus, who was sitting out of the fight watching this happen, goes, Well, to the best recollection of what my father told me about her, he's probably in hell. Go ahead, Finn. So we have to go to hell to save Ar- Erasio? No. Hell's a place that can be only accessed by those with magic power. My father, for instance, could grab him, but that takes so much effort and so much prep. This is a lot to take in that people can just pop in and out of hell. (laughs) Well, there's a lot of things that pop in and out of hell that you guys don't know. Everything that you've been told that goes bump in the night, vampires included, demons, they all exist. Let's not forget what happens at 11.11 on Sunday. (laughs) It's Wednesday, though. (laughs) No. Hang on, let me check my sundial. <laughs> it's 1812. There are clocks. You see him tap his it's wrist. It's nighttime. <laughs> you see him. You see him. There's no sundial. You can't at sundial night. at night. <laughs> There's you, clocks. You see I him know, tap his. Yeah. You, there you, was a, you don't sundial at night. <laughs> what, is, what is it? Night. Oh, <laughs> uh, since like <laughs> he's 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 being rude to you. Maximus. Yes. I don't like you anymore. He goes, I never liked you to begin with. <laughs> I'd like to jump off a bridge. Oh, no. You see no bridges. Like- one. You see no bridges in sight. Maximus goes, here, allow me. He looks at a sundial again. He goes, oh, wait, I can't tell time at night because, you know, it's a sundial and it's Wednesday. <laughs> I thought it was night. Is it not night? It is night. I thought it was. Congratulations, tall boy. Right. He goes, I can arrange a squadron of dwarves to build you a bridge so you can personally jump off. I'll name it after you. It'll be called the Stupid Bridge. <laughs> Where do we go from here? I was going to say something more rude, but... I'd like to attack Maximus. <laughs> no, stop. Stop. <laughs> You're going to attack Maximus. She's outside, though. Roll for initiative. She's outside, though. Maximus is with her. Maximus can teleport just like his father can. Initiative, you said? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I gotta do some quick We don't want to die, so she's no longer with us. <laughs> what? 25. How? Your initiative is a 7? Yes. Oh my god. So, yeah, you definitely move faster than Maximus, from what you can tell. Go ahead and attack. I'd just like to slap him in the face. With my hand. 
That's still a melee. That's still an unarmed strike. Six. Yeah, no, he catches your hand. He grabs your hand. Now it's his turn. He slaps you in the face. <laughs> What's your arm request? Fourteen. Yeah, he hits you in the face. Oh, no. Wait, are we still doing minus two to my rules? No. Okay, that's good. Oh, sorry, hang on. Let me roll his hit die. Oh, no. You take five damage. The slap is so loud, you guys can physically hear it up in the tower, two stories above them. Yes, Crowell. Uh, If you guys are done, I'm going to use Detect Magic up here. So, good luck. Uh, I'm going to use my Summon Familiar to Summon Shisui and my Crow. Shisui, my Crow. You got the reference. <laughs> Shisui, the Crow, gives me plus two on my investigation. Roll a detect magic. Eleven. I would have laughed if you would have gotten wild magic on that. It's only for spells. This is a cantrip. It's a spell in 5e. Mm. You detect magic, the entire lighthouse, everything around you begins to glow vibrantly. The entire place is magic. Any, anything in specific? In specific, above you, you sense multiple stronger magic presences. Some very dark, some very weak. Some slowly waning off. Alrighty, uh, yeah. On that note, you really only see a couple signatures moving around above you. You cannot tell which floor they are on, and there are some very dark presences also up there with them. You notice that the lighter ones are starting to wane very slowly. Yes, Finn? What do you see, Crollo? Not much. There's something above me, though. Uh, the I- ceiling? <laughs> Uh, is there a window? Like, is there more above us? Yeah, there's a stairwell leading up further. Do you want to go up? Can I have Shisui investigate? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Do I have to roll for that? Or, like, I'll, I'll just send him up Yeah, the roll an investigation. Investigation's not on here. If not, just roll search. Alright, all right, so search. 17. Shisui gives me a bonus. Alright, so yeah, uh, Krillo, as you send Shisui up, you start to see through his eyes as he is your familiar. Anybody that would be paying attention, if you would like to, you notice that Krollo's eyes have now become that of, like, a raven's eyes. And he's seeing through his... What, what, what was it called again? Your familiar? Mm-hmm. Your familiar's eyes. You see him flying up a stairwell, and as he comes up to the next floor, the third floor of the lighthouse, you notice that the only thing up there is a small black cat that's circling around at the bottom of the staircase leading up to the next floor. Are you wanting Shisui to prefer, uh, to go on even even further up to the next level, Prolo? Yeah. Alrighty, so you send Shisui up to the next flight of stairs as he goes up. You're getting up now towards the top of the lighthouse. You notice that this place is a lot more bright. There's lights, torches, and whatnot. You notice that there are two people laying in beds and a mass of people standing around them wearing, like, black robes with these strange white masks that have no face. You do notice that there's a chain, like a hatch door at the top with a ladder that would come down. You need to roll a stealth check for Shisui. 14. Unfortunately, you notice that one of the figures that is standing in one of the robes turns around and looks at your bird and shoots an arrow through Shisui. No! Can, can she sweet roll? <laughs> can she sweet roll to just fly away? Or does it just kill it? It just kills it. No, she sweet! No. I think familiars can be revived. They can, but he has to get a feather from them. What happened, Crollo? Can I let Maximus know that there's people up there? Yeah. You notice that Maximus and Ralphira have now popped right back to beside you guys, and he goes, Oh, yeah. Who do you think we were coming here, here to kill? That witch? No, vampires. Great. Yeah, because Just the, what witch the doctor was, ordered. The witch was accidental. Mm-hmm. That's fair. You told me to mess with the puzzle. We didn't I tell didn't... you to punch it. Well, you told me to move it. I moved it. <laughs> I didn't tell you to move anything. I told you to move it, but I didn't think you were going to punch it. And now your bird's dead. You don't know he's a bird. Out. Smite her. <laughs> oh. I know. I know she's a bird. Wait, how do I, I not know he's a bird? Because you were you not outside. Not outside getting slapped. You were outside. I saw oh, the bird it's fall from time. the sky. It's my It's inside. Time. You were outside. The bird. You were outside. You straight up said it was a bird. Yeah, you were outside when... Dalton's doing some serious math here. <laughs> so there is a rule for our campaign. If any of us do something that our character... Or say something 
anything about interacting with something that our character would not know, we get smited. You were still outside, were outside. at the time. He saw Shisui. I think Finn did too. Yeah, but that's yes. why I asked what happened. That's why I asked. Happened happened that's why I asked what happened. Didn't make sense. You notice that your hair begins to fall out in large clumps. As you run your hands through your hair, you now are bald. <laughs> it grows back within 24 hours. You guys go. I have to mourn Shisui. <laughs> I'm going to go up the stairs. Hank, you, Hank come on, join. Okay, Hank and I are going to go up the stairs. Are you okay, Raphael? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, got slapped and lost all your hair in one day. She's not having a good one. Ooh. And my face hurts and my ears are ringing and I just want to go. I just oh, want to go. Oh, wait, I don't have a home because my parents smited me. Where's that bridge, Maximus? You see him pull out his stone tablet as he begins to chisel away <laughs> on it as he throws it up the window. He goes, don't worry, I was sending an email. Hank. Finn, you guys are now going up the stairs. You guys now see what she we saw on the third floor, which is a barren floor. Nothing's on the walls, no windows, just a single black cat at the end of the next set of stairs going up, circling around. Hey, kitty, kitty. You see it look at you and goes, meow. Hey there. And it kind of licks its paw and cleans its little ear. It looks really cute. I doubt you're a normal cat. <laughs> It has responded. <laughs> My great little cat. How far is the cat from Hank and I? About 20 feet. I just look at it. It looks at you. I'm not petting you, cat. You better go back up those stairs. You notice it's still circling around the same spot as it lays down at the end of the stairs. Hank, what are your thoughts on this cat? I think we should try to walk past it and sneak up the stairs and find wherever Shisui's body is. Okay. And at least get one feather. That's what Crollo said. So once we get that, we book it. Sound good? Okay. I'm down. Cameron. Let's do it. Crollo knows this, not you. Okay. I never told him that, I never told you that you needed a feather. Well, it's obvious. It's familiar. Does your, does Hank know? Hank does not know that. Say goodbye to your hair. Isn't it common knowledge? No, it's magic knowledge. Great. Okay. Go ahead and smite me then. You notice that a small bat now is flying around your head. Well, hello, little friend. It's, it's squeaking. <laughs> the cat looks really annoyed. He goes, So wait, the bat is making noise. Yeah, it's well, squeaking. I walk up the stairs with caution and silence. As you get closer to the cat, you notice that the cat begins to expand. Uh-oh. Hey, kitty, the bat's yours if you want it. <laughs> And you notice it pops like a balloon. No. How loud is this? Pretty loud pop. Can I come running up the stairs to see what happened? Yeah. Do I have to roll for climb or anything? No, it's a stair set. Stairs. How do you fail stairs? (laughs) Do I I fail stairs? Do I? You would fail stairs. Do I? You slip going up the stairs. (laughs) Do I know? Do I know what's on the next floor? No. Are you not like a cat just exploded? What do I see when I get up there? You see that there is a large area that is now covered in fur and other things we're not allowed to say on air. Um, it just blew up. You guys notice that there is now a loud shuffling coming from above you. Finn, you see shadows dancing in the light coming towards the edge of the staircase. Um, guys, I think there's something upstairs. I don't know what, but it's there. I see shadows and they're moving and I think they're coming to the top of the stairs. This is bad news. Get ready to fight. Okay. Yes, Crollo. There are hooded figures. There were a few of them laying in a bed. Why didn't you tell us this before? You can't hear me. I was mumbling it. My character's depressed. Right you guys now. need to listen. Try to make a listen check. Let's see if you're here. Uh, I, uh. 15. First oh. listen. Holy cow. Um, I, I, yeah, I rolled a 23. Uh, oh I, my got, God. I got a 16. Yeah. yeah, you guys hear Crollo. Even if he is depressed. Why didn't you tell us this? Shut up, elf. There You're no also word. an elf. Yeah. There I'm no. a high elf. I think of him as worse. He's inbred. Ooh. Uh, can we start up an ambush immediately? Uh, the you first start. person I see ro- rolling down, I tackle. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that Maximus snaps in front of you, Hank, and begins to climb the stairs without fear. You notice that he pulls out his swords, one shimmering brightly with white light, and the other one shrouded in a dark 
smoke. Yes, Grola. I'm going to go up the stairs. All right. All right. You guys are now going up the stairs. Yes, Grola. I'm mumbling need feather to myself. I need feather. I need feather. Come on. So you guys are now coming up to the top of the stairs. You're now to a point where your heads, at least to eye level, can see over the ledge onto the next floor. And you now are all looking at that of which Shisui, the crow, sacrificed his life. Krillo, you do notice that at the very top of the stairs is Shisui's body. I'm going to run towards it. Can we roll for a sneak? I'm not sneaking. I'm running for it. Well, my head's bald and I'm... Can I roll for spot? Can I roll for spot? Uh, You guys can see everything clearly. Okay. I'm going to roll for sneak because... All right, Baldy, go. (laughs) I'm shiny. Move silently. Is that what it would be? Yeah. So, 21. 21. You sneak. You're moving very, very quiet. Can I put the wool blanket on my head? No! I have a wool blanket. No. Please? No. You're bald. What do, cool. This is your this is your punishment. I didn't know, but I knew. What do I see? You see the same thing she we saw. You see that there are multiple figures. Two are laying in a bed. There's about from what you can see, five robed figures standing around them, but as Krolo runs up past you all to grab Shisui, you notice that they all now become alert. They part away from one of the specific beds, one holding a newborn child. If any of you can roll a perception or a spot and get a high enough number, you will be able to see what I want you to see. I got ten. I got eight. Nine. You guys don't really notice anything special. Unfortunately, Krillo, you have successfully received one feather from Shisui's body. (laughs) (laughs) Not so high and mighty, I guess. (laughs) Shut up! (laughs) You now notice that Maximus has gone ghost white as he's staring at the figure that the robed figures were surrounding. He goes, Mother? And you see him begin to slowly fall back towards Hank and Finn. He has fainted on his feet. What happened? That one's catching him. All right, I'm gonna I'll catch punch him. him in the face. <laughs> Wake up! I'll, I'll catch. I'll catch Maximus. Can I punch him while he's in his arms? Can I step on him? No, I'm punching him. <laughs> All right, uh, you roll strength to catch. You roll strength to punch, and you no. I rolled my team plus ability modifier twenty two. 22. Alrighty, you successfully catch him, Hank. <laughs> What's your team plus four? 23. Okay, that. <laughs> you successfully punch him in the face, but it does nothing to wake him. That was a 23 punch. Why is he not conscious? Because you punched him with 23. <laughs> He, you basically punched him so hard that you woke him up and then knocked him back out. <laughs> oh my god! He went, he went, uh, mom. And then, <laughs> I need to try again. Wait, what did he say? <laughs> the flurry of blows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Can I will out of my depression long enough to shoot a ray of frost at his foot to wake him up. No. All right. Unfortunately, can I will out of my depression? Ah, <laughs> uh, you can try to roll a will save, yeah. Eighteen. Yeah, you are not depressed no more. I'm still kind of sad, but I'm no longer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you blood ring. Uh, all right. After this, you notice that Krola is now no longer a blubbering fool over this bird. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you notice that now all the robed figures are staring at you, Krollo, and they also begin to run around collecting all the equipment and the people that are laying on the beds. Because you're the closest and you've actually made it all the way up to the top, I you now notice that the small newborn child has fangs like a vampire. They go, we must protect the blood god! As they all begin to run around in the, a defensive way, I suppose. It looks more like a bunch of people are just scrambling to try to grab all the equipment and notes and books and everything else that are there. It seems, once again, I am the center of attention. <laughs> I do not mind this. But I would like to know why you were scrambling once you saw me. None of them talk to you. They all begin to start disappearing using the transportation spell. Vampires can teleport now. <laughs> uh, can I intimidate? Like, how dare you ignore me? You can try. 19. You feel a sharp glare quiet your voice. 
from behind one of the masks, you feel a very menacing presence that is full of malice. Can I will out of that to do it again? No. I want to will against this man. Fine, you know what? Roll. Roll a little. Let's see. 15. You rolled 20. I'll ask the group. Danger. I'll ask the group. Did you did you guys catch what Maximus said before he passed out? Something about his mommy. I'll walk up the stairs and see if any of them recognize Maximus. They're all gone. They've all now disappeared, including the people on the beds. Now what? Thanks for wasting our time. Yeah. You notice that one of them reappears up on one of the lin- the window seal ledges up above that is encircling the lighthouse. As he takes off his mask, you guys can see that he's obviously Obviously not human, but may have been once. His skin is an ashen gray, while his eyes are a deep crimson. As he goes, why is it always mortals that like to get in our way? It's always humans, orcs, elves, everything of any nature that decides to get inside the vampire's way. Yes, Corolla? First of all, I didn't realize that you guys were sane enough to talk. Second, how dare you compare me to this wood elf, and what kind of elf are you? Elf. Half. This Are you a half elf? No. no. He's a homebrew. Oh. This, no. this other elf, I'm not even sure where he came from. <laughs> I am a high elf. Don't you dare disrespect me. Could you please be quiet and let him finish? Go on. You just seem kind of confused while you're being polite to him, but he goes, Anyways, I guess one of you has enough sense to listen. I understand, outcasts. None outcast. I'm that of a royal bloodline destined to take over this pathetic world, ending anyone's lives that get in our way. Well, your life was almost taken until somebody stopped it, so you're outcasted from the human race. Uh, I threw my humanity aside. No, you didn't. Behind those crimson eyes, I can see a true soul that's hurt. Are you trying to twilight <laughs> this? Like, all right, Bella. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. We're not turning. He's not a sparkly vampire no, that has feelings listen, and emotions. I'm trying to see if he can open up to us so we can learn his true agenda. What, Crollo? <laughs> I'm trying to get past this Twilight fan fiction. It's not. I'm trying to <laughs> trick him. So that we can know his true intentions. She is tricking, I guess. You're not doing Persuading. anything to make him feel any more warm to you. I tried. Worth a shot. Yes, Grillo. You said that you were part of a royal bloodline. You were born into your title. Back in my hometown, I was given one of the top positions because of my skill. Yada, yada. yada. Shut yes. up, you wood elf. Yes, then. I'll ask the vampire about Maximus and him saying mother. He goes, oh, little Maxie wants his mommy. Oh, well, too bad. Even his father couldn't take her from us. <sighs> what do you mean by that? Oh, Vincent never told you. No. He, he always presumed that his wife was dead, but the truth was he never wanted to tell anybody that he was too weak to stop Lord Magus. He was too weak to protect his family, his only child, his wife from us. He may be all powerful, but we are many. We are the darkness. We are the shadows. We are the things that bump in the night in your closet beneath your bed. We kill. We drink the blood of whoever and whomever we want. We are the night itself. (laughs) And as for you, High Elf, do you ever think that your title wasn't given to you because of your skill, but because of your mouth? I've heard your race has a filthy tongue. From where I'm standing, there's three low elves. One disgusting human, and one person that may fancy myself, at least. And that is the son of my greatest enemy. Who's that? Vincent, Vincent. you fool. Are you just not listening? (laughs) Apparently not. Yes, Grollo. You may be the shadow, but what is the shadow when there's a light there? I use this isn't gonna do anything, but I'm gonna cast dancing lights on my hand and try and punch him. Vampires are afraid of light. He's like fifty feet above you. I don't care. I ran trapped. Hank throw him. Hank throw him. Throw me, Hank. (laughs) You got it. I'm pecking him up and tossing him as hard as I can. Roll strength. I just got a fifteen. Fair enough. You throw Krillo successfully. Krillo, you're now rushing midair at the vampire with dancing light activated in your hand. Uh, which one of you had the ring of hold? Uh, I have ring of hold. You notice that Krillo, Ralphira, and Hank are now frozen. Krillo, you're frozen in midair. Will. I want to will. Is he you frozen, cannot. Frozen, yes, like, I can. Stuck in the air, or did he, like, physically freeze? He physically froze. He's now falling back to the ground. No, like, ice. No. Oh. He's frozen Just motionly. Frozen. You notice that you're now falling towards the ground. You have. You cannot do anything. You cannot move. The only one that can move is in. What, what did you do? He goes, bah, Vincent. 
giving you that stupid ring. The only thing that can defeat this spell. And I will. You, you cannot will. I feel like I should. If any of you like, like if any of you would like to try, try to move. Okay. I rolled a soft 20. You realize that the more you try to struggle, the more you feel yourself livingly fading. You notice that as you try to push away from the spell, your slow your conscience is slowly floating backwards, zooming out to where you're looking at your living body. The more you try to struggle, the more your soul itself begins to tear itself apart. Yes, Crow. You rolled a nat 20 with a plus four in will. Does that mean my soul gets ripped in half? <laughs> Crow, you die. <coughs> oh, no! Good luck. This campaign stinks. I can't leave. I can't get past camera. <laughs> Um, I rolled a 14. You're fine. Okay. Uh, um. Then you notice that Rolo has now began to grow very pale. Would you like to try anything? Maximus is now slowly starting to wake from his fainted slumber that he was brought back out of. And then, is he frozen? No. I put, he has one of the rings, too. I put Maximus back on his feet and I ask him, What's happening to Crollo? His face is turning pale and there's this vampire up on the ceiling and... You notice that the vampire is now gone. He has disappeared. Bafira and Hank can now move freely. Maximus runs over to Crollo as he places his hand on the back of Crollo's chest. And he goes... He's dead. My only assumption is he tried to fight the hold spell. He tried willing himself out of it. He tore his soul apart in the process. There's many things in the world that can bring him back. It's just whether or not we can find them or if they actually work the way they're supposed to. There's the Lazarus Pit, but Krilla will come back a madman, not himself. Do souls go to hell? It depends. Well, he tore it apart, so did it just shatter? Or did he tear it from his body and then get sent to his afterlife? He tore it from his body, Krolo. You're still floating around spiritually watching this all happen. (laughs) (laughs) Are we just skipping death saves? Is that not a thing in this one? No, it's a thing, but you ripped your soul out of your body. Technically, your body's dead, but your soul's still alive. Well, you intended for that to happen, so well, I guess that makes sense. Do we if know you're, this? If, you're, if you or soul was about to be like sent to either like heaven or hell or, you know, stuck in purgatory like you are now, you just ripped your soul, you detached your soul from your body. It wasn't forced to go to one of those places do as we, if you would die. About this, or do we just think he's dead, dead? You guys think he's dead, dead. Well, then I'd like to say my idea. We know that Rezio is in hell. Well, maybe if we could bring him back or somehow communicate with him, he could fight his soul in hell and bring it back and we could put it in Crollo. I know he wouldn't be the same, but is it worth a try? It's possible. Yes, Crollo. Can I mess with him? <laughs> you cannot physically touch anybody. Can I, like, make faces at him in that? <laughs> in the afterlife? Yeah, you make faces at him in purgatory. It makes me feel better. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, like, look at my body with Shisui's feather. Just... <laughs> That's me. I you do good. notice that Shisui's body is now beginning to twist and turn and come back to life itself. At least Shisui made it. Wait, what does that mean for Shisui if I'm dead? <laughs> Shisui's become his own independent actual animal and not just a conjuration of magic. Cool. Like the velvety? Yes, Hank. I said, well, that's odd. You just notice that Maximus begins to glow very vibrantly as he places his hand on Crollo's back, you see this light beginning to transfer from Maximus to Crollo. Crollo, you feel that your soul's now being forcibly pulled back into your body. Being dead was cool for a bit. Um, <laughs> you awaken back inside of your body, but Maximus now collapses. Oh, hey, stupid. How was hell? <laughs> I want to step on him. You notice that Maximus no. has now, in turn, gone cold. You notice that his eyes are growing hazy. He's not turning into a vampire, is he? No. Check his pulse. Okay. You guys check his pulse? Mm-hmm. You notice that his heart beats slowly slowing down, each beat growing towards his last. I hate this guy, but this is sad. <laughs> Maximus looks towards Curl and goes, We may have not known each other, but my father trusts every single one of you. He trusts that you can do great things. He trusts that you can save my mother, this town, this island. As my dying wish, I want you to bring Magus to his knees to make him pay for every soul that he's shattered, every family that he's murdered, everything he's ever done. And with that, Maximus 
gives out his last breath as he goes slump in Finn's arms. And with that, you guys hear a light thump come from above. Shisui has lowered the ladder somehow to the attic. I'll go up it. And- I think we need to do something with Maximus. We can't just leave him here. He deserves more than that, even if he was arrogant. Yes, Grillo. Grillo, if you would like, you can tell the people, your crew, about the spell that Maximus used to save your life. He traded part of his soul for mine, except it seems that the spell only takes part of it, but he's used it several other times. I'm not quite sure on what, but this was the last time he was able to use it. Would you guys like to continue Yeah. to the attic? I'll go up the attic. I'll still have Maximus in my hands. Because this is body still in my hands. Already. Hmm? This is body still in my hands. Yeah, you're carrying him like this. Okay. I'll go up to the attic with him in my arms. Alrighty. I'll follow. You three, we need to get out of this place. We've already had three losses and we've only been in here for how long? Hank makes a very good point. If only Max were here to check his son down. You guys go up to the attic, correct? You guys are checking that out. At least Finn and Raphael are. Perlo and Hank are still down on the bottom floor. I'll I'll investigate it while looking through Shisui's eyes. All right. Well. Does he become familiar again? I don't know. No. No? He's He's a living bird. He just sits on your shoulders, though. Okay. He's like an animal companion now. All right. Uh, For those of you who didn't know, this is Shisui, my crow. We know. Yeah. Oh. We know now. Sweet, sweet. Is there any light in the attic? Uh, there is a small lamp burning. Can I roll for spot to see what all is up in the attic? You notice that up above in the bleachers, there's a small notebook. It's tucked away in the corner. And for anything else, you will have to roll search. I'll roll for search. Yes, bro. I feel like we should have ended the episode at the part where I died, and then that would have made for a better ending. Oh, I got a good ending. Oh, because... We're over time. It's all right. I rolled seven. You rolled a seven? Yeah. Already. Yeah, you don't notice anything else besides some boxes, some crates, a small table. So I, I do see that notebook. Yeah. I'll tell Raphael that there's a notebook by the lamp. I'm pretty good at reading these things. Can right. I use Decipher Script? Yes, you can. That is an eight. It's not very good. Is it magic text? No, it's a regular text. It's like common, but it's wrote weird. Well, plus I have a uh, low light vision, so that would... Mm-hmm. As you're flipping through the pages, you notice that there's just pages upon pages of p- pictures and descriptions and ways to create these disgusting monstrosities from humans and beasts. They're almost like chimeras, but for D&D terms, they're called human-made monstrosities. I'll put the book in my backpack. Alrighty. And uh, Hank, Rafaira, are you guys going to make your search checks? He already made his search check, sure. and he lost. Already? 11. 13. Rafaira, you find a small box tucked away behind the desk. Inside of it is a small gray ingot of some sort of metal. What'd you find? Are you going to touch it? I would like to handle it, yes. As soon as you touch this metal, you feel it almost has its own heartbeat. But the more you come to realize it's your own heartbeat being projected through the metal back to you. Think of a weapon. I'll think of my dagger. And with that, the metal immediately forms into a dagger inside of your hand. You have picked up one Arjulian ingot. May I add that to my equipment? Mm -hmm. How do I spell it? (laughs) Arjul. Yeah, Arjulian. Just so the viewers and the cast knows, Arjulian is a special it is a living metal that when touched by a person immediately bonds to their soul and you can even level it up like with your class the more you use it the more you transform it you can transform it into different weaponry at a will including it could go from a sword to a bow in an instant it could go from a bow to a battle axe or a shield or even a set of armor but it's level one so the only thing it can transform into for now is your dagger. This is pretty neat, guys. And with this, there's nothing else up there for you to find. Are you guys going to head back downstairs, making your way down? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to... While they're doing that, can I already be heading downstairs? Because I'm going to check out that one person's body. 
uh, yeah, you get to the third floor, but you notice that the cat's body has disappeared. You mean what's left of it? Everything's gone. But in the middle of the room, you notice that there's a slumped figure sitting in the middle of the room. You notice that as it begins to stand, the figure grows bigger and bigger and bigger until its back begins to touch the roof of the third floor. You notice that as it unfolds its arms from its body, two long chains reach out from each side, hanging from its arms. As it begins to bellow, a loud roar erupts. In an instant, the chains catching fire, the room beginning to heat up with this intense heat. I told that. you so. I told you all so. We should have left when we had the chance. And look now, there's a big scary over there. <laughs> and you weren't there. It's you're, not, you're, yeah, you weren't there. You smite. Rosa. Smite me. I don't care. Alrighty, you're ahead of me, Cameron. For this entire combat, you now have a spectral shield that hovers hovers around you. That's not smiting. <laughs> It grants you a plus two to your AC, and you are now immune to the magic spell, Magic Missile. What? I so, lost my hair, and he gets this? I had a bat earlier, too. I wasn't <laughs> able to do sneaky. Yeah, no, I've been just using the wild magic surge. What? Because Colton specifically said that he wanted to walk down there by himself first. Stupid choice. It's You're going to get mauled. No. <laughs> yes, Vincent <laughs> is this giant... He's magical. Titan looking. He's, he's unpredictable. He could very well turn himself into something like that. You see this. Are you going to yell to the ones above you? Like your friends, your teammates, the crew, the hodgepodge misfits? No, I'm not going to yell. I'm going to say, it's times like these. I have a secret technique that I like to use. Run away really fast. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we'll end for the night. A colossal monster appearing on the third floor of the lighthouse. The death of Crollo for about five minutes until Maximus sacrificed himself willingly to bring Crollo back to life. And Erasio traveling around hell. What will the next episode bring for our, our intrepid adventurers? Find out next time, of course, at midnight from the Midnight D&D cast. Thank you all for listening and have a nice rest of your night. This episode of Midnight D&D was made possible by music from Incompetech. Run Amok by Kevin McElyode was used. For more information, visit Incompetech.film. On Midnight D&D. Yeah.